Okay, we will continue by discussing important talks in 2017. I summarized many of them to you. Let's discuss them today. The first talk article about polycystic ovary syndrome. We have to know that BCO syndrome is the most common endocrinal disorder affecting females. It's affecting up to 15% of women and childbearing variants. And the actual number may be more than that. And in fertile cases, in infertile cases, it's more and more than that. Polycystic ovary syndrome has familial tendency. If a woman has polycystic ovary syndrome, 50% she has other first degree female relative also having polycystic ovary syndrome or having male, male relative complaining of metabolic disorders. So there is familial tendency. Women with BCO are at risk to have type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. Because they can develop insulin resistance. And insulin resistance is the main pathology in type 2 diabetes. We have Rotterdam criteria. Rotterdam criteria, I think 2003, uh, this consensus said that we have three criteria. If two of them are present, we can diagnose polycystic ovary syndrome after exclusion of other causes. What are these three criteria? Number one, clinical or biochemical hyperandrogenism. If there are hirsutism, manifestations of hyperandrogenism, or uh, there is only hyperandrogenism diagnosed by investigations, this is the first criteria. Second one, oligoovulation or an ovulation. So we mean that the cycle will be infrequent. Infrequent. Number three, we can see the polycystic appearance on ultrasound. These small multiple follicles in the cortex of, of, of the ovary, it can be present in one ovary and it can be present also in both ovaries. If we have two of these three criteria, we can diagnose polycystic ovary syndrome. But notice that if your case is adolescent, the three criteria, all the three criteria should be present in adolescent. And we can't diagnose polycystic ovary syndrome until after two years of menarche. Because during the first two years of menarche, some of these criteria can be present physiologically. So you have to wait two years after Menarche, and the three criteria should be present to diagnose adolescent polycystic ovary syndrome. In polycystic ovary syndrome, these some hormonal imbalance may be present, like increased androgen, increased LH, but notice that all these hormonal disorders are not used for diagnosis. For diagnosis, we use body, we use a Rotterdam criteria. Do you see that Rotterdam criteria contains LH level? Does it contain AMH? Does it contain LH, FSH ratio? It doesn't contain all of these. Memorize them well. But LH can be raised, FSH usually normal, increased 
fasting insulin, insulin resistance, decreased sex hormone binding globulin. We know that insulin decreases sex hormone binding globulin. That's why free androgen will be present more in the blood. So we have manifestations of hyperandrogenism. E2 increased or normal AMH increased because these small follicles produce AMH. And of course, increased AMH is one of the prognostic factors that this woman is at risk of developing ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome if we give induction or if we do uh, IVF. Prolactin usually normal. Notice that, and this is very important question, came multiple times in the exam. You can see that each exam, this question comes. About WHO classification of ovulatory disorders in female. We have class one, class two, class three. In class one, gonadotrophin level is low. In class two, gonadotrophins usually normal. Class three, gonadotrophins FSH, LH are elevated. Decreased gonadotrophins, this is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. This woman is infertile because her pituitary gland secretes low level of gonadotrophins. How to treat? Give gonadotrophins. Or you can give as second option, GNRH analog, balsatile manner or intermittent manner. Second case, she has normal gonadotrophins in the same times she is anovulatory. 80% of these cases caused by polycystic ovary syndrome. How to treat polycystic ovary syndrome? Number one, diet and lifestyle modification. Diet itself, diet control and weight reduction can correct polycystic ovary syndrome. If there is no response, second line, we give clomiphene citrate up to six months. This is the treatment of cases with polycystic ovary syndrome. What if clomiphene citrate <coughs> failed? Then we have other options. We can use clomiphene citrate plus metformin. We can give gonadotrophins. If the woman doesn't want <coughs> injection treatment, we can offer ovarian drilling, laparoscopic ovarian drilling. We do four banctures in one ovary only. And usually ovulation occurs from the second one, not from the one with drilling. Only four banctures. Type three, it's hypergonadotrophic hypergonadism. And this is ovarian failure. And it can be premature ovarian insufficiency if age younger than 40. Please, I want any body of you. Yes. Give mouse or keyboard. Okay, I want somebody. Can you write here? You can write here or only on yes. bar point. Yes, okay. Please, I want somebody to... Yes, Dr. Osama. To repeat, who is talking? Dr. Rokaya. Yes, Dr. Rokaya. Uh, please, I want you to repeat what I said about 
the three classes of WHO class. Okay. For the class one, uh, yes, mm -hmm. the class one, it uh, the gonadotropins are low. You can write. And uh, okay. You can write. Yes, class one. Right and uh, gonad. Uh, class one gonadotropins. Only the they one. are. One second. They are low. One second. Only Dr. Yes. will write. Okay. Okay, write and talk to Dr. Rokai. Uh, the gonadotropins, they are low, LH and FSH, it is low because there is a decrease in the gonadotropin releasing hormones and these patients, they are treated by gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs in a pulsatile manner which will then increase the level of the gonadotropins from the pituitary and will treat the patient. Number two uh, group, number two group is the gonadotropins, they are normal. And 80% uh, of these patients, they are cases of PCO. And these patients, they respond by lifestyle modification and diet. And if they don't, uh, and it, it is seen that a reduction in 5% of the weight, it leads to a, a great improvement in the ovulation. And uh, if uh, they don't improve with uh, this, uh, these two, then we give clomiphene citrate to these patients. If ovulation does not occur with clomiphene citrate, then we give them clomiphene citrate along with metformin. And if this doesn't work, we can give them gonadotropins. And if that doesn't work, we can go for the laparoscopic ovarian drilling. The third group is uh, in which the uh, gonadotro uh, this LH and FSH, they are very high. It means that they, the gonadotro uh, these ovaries, they are not working and it is a case of the premature ovarian failure. So these uh, patients, they will then uh, respond with ovum donation? Yes, we can offer oocyte donation, adoption. Yes, adoption, yes. Yes, some cases are uh, what's called resistant ovary syndrome. Uh, this is not written in the guideline, but some cases yes. are resistant ovary syndrome. This resistant ovary syndrome may respond to high dose FSH and LH. But generally, you consider that this is a ovarian failure. If age less than 40 and it occurs in 1% of women, it's called premature ovarian insufficiency. Okay, thanks much, Dr. Rokai. Thank you, Dr. Sama. Thank you. So, prolactin in these cases, usually normal. The problem also is that cases with polycystic ovary syndrome are at increased risk of what's called metabolic syndrome and increased risk of cardiovascular diseases. They have high estrogen. Usually the cases are obese. And the risk is more if there is more central fat. The uh, dietitian Discrimin discriminate between two types of obesity. Discriminate between central obesity and obesity in buttocks. So we can call them abel or beer shaped. Beer shaped, the obesity is more in the buttocks. Apple shaped, the obesity is more in the abdomen. 